Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments with the continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you're not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula again. This is challenge 496. So let's read the program statement. Okay, it says sum the max scored in various subjects and sort on subjects. Okay, let's look at the raw data to understand what's going on. We have two columns of data. Okay, the student column and then subjects. Okay, so students, well, those should be the names of the students, interesting names, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, and then subjects, and you can see that in the subjects, you have both the subject and score. Which shouldn't be a problem, at least if there was some consistency, you know, to the data. But what you notice is that it's very inconsistent. Here you have a space hyphen. Here you have just a hyphen. Here you have, you know, nothing at all, just smooshed with the subject. Here you have a space. Here you have nothing. So it's just all over the place. Of course, when I see, you know, this level of inconsistency, most times you may think, oh, okay, well, maybe you use a lot of text functions, text splits, yeah, quite a number of delimiters and try to manipulate it or think of power query, you know, but it's always good to identify the method to the madness. But now with a lot of introduction of, you know, some superpowers into Excel, yeah, this has become much easier. Someone could decide to use Python in Excel you know, to get this done, but I like to use the new regex functions. I'm always tempted to call them regex because they're regular expressions. People say regex, but just written, right? Looks like regex. Anyway, whatever, regex, regex, okay? You know, so they are very useful when it comes to pattern identification and pattern matching. And I want to take advantage of that in this case. I'm going to build it up, you know, slowly, assuming that you don't know how some of the patterns work, but I know a lot of people watching are, you know, probably even pretty more advanced than myself, you know, but just bear with me, you know, so that I lay the proper foundation and then I'll show you how, you know, the formula works. Okay, so let's assume I want to extract, you know, from the string here, the name of the subject. I can use the regex extract, okay, and that kind of makes sense, right? Extract based on the text that matches this regular expression. So regex, I can give it this text, right? And then it asks me for the pattern. I put it in double quotes. So I know that for the word Spanish, it's made up of English alphabet somewhere between A and Z. I don't know which of them, but I know that, yeah, you have A and Z occurring multiple times in the word Spanish. So instead of typing A, B, C, D, E, and say, look for any one of them, you just put them in square brackets. So it matches any of them. So if it sees any, you know, character between A and Z here, it extracts it and says, yes, this matches the pattern. Okay. But now you know that Spanish is not a one letter word. It's made up of multiple letters. So it means that A to Z will be found multiple times, right? So you can put a plus to say extract, you know, a string for me that has A to Z, you know, and multiple of it. Anything between A and Z and multiple of it. That's the meaning of this. Okay. So let's close that. And then you see the result. So it gives us Spanish. Why does it give us Spanish and not Spanish? The S is in uppercase, as you can see here. And the pattern you have put is lowercase a to lowercase z. And this is case sensitive. So it's not able to match the S. So one way to fix it is to include in your pattern, instead of just doing lowercase a and lowercase z, you can include uppercase a to z as well. But you can fix it easily also with one of the arguments of the regex function, which is the last argument that talks about case sensitivity. So do a comma, do a comma. And you say case insensitive match, right? So that's this. So with that, you know, upper A, lower A become equivalent. Okay, and now you can see that it gets us Spanish. Now let's take this down and you can see that it gets the rest. The only thing is that on the other, you know, rows, this one has like three subjects, but it's only returning Spanish. You want to see Spanish, English, French. Okay, so come back here. Let's look at the second argument, which is the return mode. So now let me put a comma again for you to see. Return mode, the default is to match just the first, you know, the first match. But now we want it to match all of them. So if there's English, French, if there are three subjects, so long as they all match this pattern of having characters A to Z occurring multiple times, I want them returned. So I'm going to put a one here. Let's see what the difference is going to be. Then now take this down. Okay. So now you see that for this, it's able to return the three. Okay, and for the others, it returns as many as you want. Now we are going to use this same, you know, expression, you know, to do like the numbers. 
Okay, so for the numbers is very similar. Instead of doing A to Z, you can just do 0 to 9. Huh? Okay. And when you do 0 to 9, you know. Uh, okay, this is pointing at B7. I was a little stumped for a bit there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is this. Yes, if you take this down. Yeah. So you can see that for all of them, it's able to extract you know all the digits here and here is also able to extract all the subjects so at least there seems to be more you know like a pattern to the madness now right but one thing you notice is that he extracts this as text that's why they are all left aligned but we'll fix this at a later time okay so now just to take it one step further what you can do is that instead of having one expression that gives you the text one expression that gives you the numbers you could put them together so let me take out you know the portion of it that does this and i would fix this zero to nine All right so now let's come let's see here right so inside the uh, pattern here we've said a to z plus i could say i could say or using a pipe which means match anything that looks like a to z multiple times or anything that looks like what zero to nine so meaning it's going to look at the whole string and look at okay yes do i see anything that matches a to z multiple times yes it extracts those do i see anything that matches zero to nine extract those and extracts all of them together so let's do an enter we have a spill error as expected let's take out the culprits Okay, and now you see that with this one expression, it spews everything. So Spanish, 73 English, and they are all sitting in different cells. And if you have this, then you're good. So it means irrespective of, you know, how it's written and everything kind of squashed together, it's able to extract, you know, the entire, um, you know, subjects and scores. So with this, it means I can even concatenate all this you know and just give it one long string and it will do what i want so instead of doing b7 here let's do a concat okay so let's say concat this whole thing just make it one long string it doesn't matter as you can see that whether there's english and 34 it's able to get it out so i don't need to put a delimiter or anything i should be fine so let's do enter okay and see now you can see it's gotten everything now subject score subject score subject score and so on so let me take all of these guys out okay and then let's just put this here right so this is everything now for it to be useful to me as in i need to make it properly structured and what does properly structured mean it means that i need to have subjects in one column and i need to have scores in the other column that's the way i can feed it into you know a pivot to get something that looks like this and i can use one of my wrap functions for that okay so i can use wrap rows so with wrap rows it asks you how many columns do you want to have on each row before i wrap before i move to the next row because i know i need a subject column and um a score column too I know that I need to wrap, you know, after two. So after two columns, you know, take the next data to the next row. Okay. And see how neatly it comes out. So just with this, you know, regex pattern, you know, we've been able to get something that looks as neat as this. So this is the perfect, you know, structure for like a pivot or if we want to use formulas for a group by. So let me do it on the side. So you see what's going on. Okay. So we do a group by. Right, and I'll say for my rows, yes, I want the subjects to be my rows, and I want this to be in my, um, you know, those are my values. Now, the only thing you notice is that these are text, right? So that could pose a challenge. So what you could do is you could do maybe like a minus minus, you know, just to convert it to numbers. Okay, then for the function, you want to do a sum. So you are summing, you know, the scores for each of those subjects. Next thing, I don't want to have, yeah, there are no field headers. Okay, and I don't want to have totals. Okay, so close. Right. And I have this. The beautiful thing is that with the pivot table or with the group by or pivot by function, you don't need to sort. It sorts it for you. So even though the question asks us to sort, you know, we don't need an extra layer of oh, sort whatever response you have because it's going to be sorted by default. And this is the answer we are looking for. So all I'm going to do is just to build it around what I have here and not use, you know, this helper, you know, cells. That's all. So I'm already here, you know, and this is a good place. So what I can do is I can give this an X, you know, make it an expression that I can reference afterwards. So I can say, let, let me call this P. So P is everything you're seeing, you know, on the grid there. Okay. So that's it. So that's your P. So we will just do the group by thing that we just did. That's what we are doing. Nothing more than that. So I can now do group by. Now, for the row fields, you know that that's 
is the subject that needs to go there, which is the first column of P. Okay, so how do you get the first column of P? Many people could do index, you could do choose columns, you could do tick. You know, you could say tick P, you know, and say I want to take the first column of P. Okay, that's that. Now, for the values, which is the scores, that's on the right side. You know, I can decide to also use tick, right? But let me put my minus minus just to correct, you know, the um, booleans, or sorry, text to numbers. In this case, I can say P, you know, and I will do minus one, meaning take from the right. Somebody else could also say drop the first column, right? It will be left to the second column, or you can say take the second column. So many ways to skin a cat. Next thing is, yes, I take a sum, then I don't have field headers, and I don't want totals, okay? So that's that. I close this. That's the group by is closed. Then I close, you know, the let, All right? And then we have exactly what we want. And it's much easier, you know, with regex. I mean, there are many ways you can, you know, try to force this into looking, you know, structured. But yeah, it could take quite some effort. But with regex and pattern recognition, it's much easier. So, well, maybe this is some incentive for you to learn how to use regex. So I hope... You enjoyed this video and you know the systematic you know breakdown or build up of the formula as the case is you know if you did like it please hit the like button so that youtube you know can recommend this to more people and also subscribe to my channel excel moments there's a button there that you can use yeah very attractive button so please you know do use the button and i will see you in the next video for now i'm out